Is Honduras in the freaking? Is it in the? Is it in the game? It still isn't. Rahal, this is your. This is your opportunity. Can we add? <laughs> <laughs> looks like you're streaming from someone's shed, dude. People don't understand. It looks like a wallpaper. I love my room, but <laughs> nobody actually knows what like the stuff is made out of. So. Now, I've been teching the empty hop for like ages, but that's the first one that we're gonna get to, which is the empty hop. So what it's supposed to do is it'll keep you in a position where you're pretty much off the ground in most cases, and then you can kind of just hover. So that way, to get punishes in and be close enough for the punish, for any low profile punish of any kind, you can always just punish with an aerial. And then once you punish with an aerial, it'll spring into other things, so it's always extremely convenient to have. You can land if you if somebody expects the aerial or if they back up, so you can actually land against them and then just occupy that space that they evaded from the stair, and then just use it to, and then just replace it with sidelight. Dash jump, you hover, you miss the stair or something, or you barely hit it, right? If you empty hop and you just land instead, you can go for sidelight. And then just go for that extension. Because if I if I dash and I move up, then I'm already gaining stage. Like this right here is just a fourth of Small Brawl Haven. You empty hop towards the player and then you go for side light, you already have this amount of stage, which is super convenient. And it just puts Kaya in that in that cover everything position. You know what I'm saying? Next, we have the backdash empty hop. This is like one of the more defensive things that you're supposed to learn, but it's it's like a complete negation against any offensive option that you can possibly fight against. But remember how much stage you're giving up when you go for this. Like this is a lot, but it's all done in one simple movement. Like I don't use it too often because I'm so, even, even for me, like I don't do this as often as I'm supposed to. So sometimes I run into attacks way too often. I forget how to give up stage. I become too aggressive for my own good. Okay. If your movement feels predictable, it's because you might be waiting too long for something. It's one of my biggest weaknesses as well. I have a very hard time. I actually have a very hard time with this because sometimes I don't know my own movement. And you use this, that way you could just have a good idea of what happens when you become defensive. Because when you go up stage against this Bodvar right here, right? If you, if you backdash empty hop against them and they're not doing anything, you don't have to go for that anymore. This completely disappears. You can land against them and go for the dash impulse sidelight right here. Of course, this doesn't apply for every weapon in the game, but for spear and bow who are perfect at covering angles, this is perfect. This is everything that you're kind of supposed to uh, go for. It's just, it's just a way to diagnose what's happening in the gameplay. Extensions are just things completely outside of what I've shown you so far. You're out of range of any dash impulse attack. And also when you step back, you know, obviously you can't dash in and try to go for the hit. Um, an extension hop. I talk about this a lot, actually. So what I do is you, you dash jump, you levitate towards the ground as fast as possible, and then you immediately dash cancel into an attack. Like that. I don't know why that was so hard to input, but you get the idea. What I do is whenever I dash, I press, I press like hard left. I don't, I don't go, I don't, I don't try to like input up or anything. Try to keep yourself as low as possible. And then it'll be like a small sequence that you'll learn like naturally mechanically. After you go for the dash jump, you put yourself as low as possible as soon as you're off the ground. And then you just hold down. And when you're at this point on the ground, you have to go down and side. And then once that's over, you can dash into whatever attack you want. But in my case, um, when somebody gives up stage and they kind of feel me like going up against them whenever I go for a dash impulse attack and they're waiting for and they're waiting for me to extend but not overextend. In that case, then you go for the dash impulse side light, which is known to be already extremely generous. This right here is perfect. It's exactly what you need. And it covers a little over half of the stage, which is why it's called an overextension. But this also happens to be extremely dangerous for anybody who doesn't understand, because you overextend against the opponent, 
and they and you do too much you are in a position to get punished easily so be careful like what you do with this but i mean all in all it is something to practice that way you can catch up to your opponent very easily this will be extremely easy and it's actually one of the easier ways to uh to catch up to those people who shark without it being extremely jarring i forgot to mention this but there's a, a certain kind of tech that you guys haven't really you guys don't really look at it like this, but it is extremely important to note. And it's called the Megdi Tech. The Megdi Tech is not what you guys think it is. And it wasn't invented by him, but it was extremely popularized from him. He popularized this entirely because it was the perfect way to engage and disengage against the opponent. Mostly disengaging. This was perfect. And he abused it to get top three. Which is also perfect because if you're in a tournament then obviously you're going to exercise the best qualities to win that's just how it goes for any kind of environment that involves competition you dash jump and then you just back back dodge it's one of the it's one of the easier things to learn when you dash jump at the opponent and then you back dash or you back dodge i'm sorry you put yourself in a position where you completely engaged on the opponent and completely canceled your momentum to dodge away and then just land safely. Sandstorm put this into practice a little bit more recently, especially for his for his weapons, which are also string weapons. He found himself in a better position just in general. The dodge away in the air is it's it's something to keep note of because in the case that the opponent does follow you or try to attack you at your hurt box, this is perfect because you you can land with the with an early attack. And you can completely throw them off guard. It's just it, it's just a, uh, a small part of like his main game plan. When you're playing a string weapon, this also makes it important because you can find a way in. This just happens to be one of the easier ways to do it. Now this can go for any dodge in the game, but for Megdi specifically, he will go for back dodge. Why? Because it's the safest and it prevents him to actually get punished or to play off of what he's doing at that moment. So when he's dashing at the opponent, instead of Canceling his momentum. You can just go in for the mix-up. And once you go in for the mix-up, it's just a plethora of strings that you can possibly go for. And this, I, I kind of just call like a... A wall drift cancel. I really don't know how to explain it, but yes. It's just part of it. So, if you were to hit a nair normally, you would sink yourself in this position. But if you cancel just as you get onto the wall, you won't have to deal with this anymore. I've been, I've been using this so many times to either catch a dodge for somebody who wants to GC delight me on the ledge, which is extremely convenient because also my momentum is completely cancelled so if I rub up against the wall, it's perfect. It helps me also catch dodges for when I want to confirm. So instead of going for a raw ground hunt here when somebody dodges up or they dodge in, I give myself some extra frames to cancel the, the ground pound and actually just give myself this full stop before I finally go in for the ground pound. Just something small to mention. Wall cancels are just a part of it, but it's something to keep in mind just to really just to really add um, to your edge guarding potential. What it also does is it also helps you against those who might use a dodge while you recover instead of you just rubbing up against the wall. And it makes things a little slower. It's just a small delay to have around. To just do it, you just kind of have to use your, you have to use the active frames, or not the active frames, the startup of your, of your move. And then just rub up against the wall and then just press forward. Small timing behind it, but it'll be worth it. Just like that, just the startup. But if you use the active frames, then it won't cancel. So it's just something to keep in mind. The next one, or the last one that I'm gonna cover for this one, um, is the is corner jumping. There's a small number that knows about it, but it gives you extra heights that is not imaginable in other scenarios, and it helps you for and it helps you for certain extensions or certain confirms if somebody's too high. So what happens is you dash at the corner and then you go for jump. Normally, if you dash jump, you're not gonna get as nearly as much height as you would if you were to corner jump. There you go. It is a little smaller, but it does make all the difference when you're edge guarding and you dash jump at the corner. And then you go in for the Sarah. 
or something of the sort. The extra rage goes a long mile, especially in those cases where you might have slightly missed. And yes, you can also do this at, you can also do this on platforms. So sometimes you wouldn't be able to catch a platform or you wouldn't be able to land on one, but with a corner jump you can. You have extra momentum. And not only that, you also have extra height. Okay, since you guys asked, I, I can also do, I can also do platform cancels. So, what I do is I do a full jump at the platform, and then I just, I, I just got this naturally through mechanics. Is it hard? Absolutely. But you dash before you go in for the jump. It's the same thing as if you went for, uh, it's the same thing as if you went for the corner jump. You just dash, and then you go in for the jump. Remember that, and then you won't really mess up too much. It's still, it, it is still very hard. But a mechanic that people do is if, if they really want to ledge cancel and get out of danger, they burn their dodge before they go in for the platform. That way they can just cancel as many times as they need to to get out of danger. Like that. And, it, and the window to actually get the platform cancel in is not interrupted at all by the dodge because it is gone. It's no longer a resource that you have to think about. So, okay. I'm running out of options here. I need to uh, either I land and suffer a sig of some kind or a confirm of some kind, or I dash cancel and get completely out of danger in a way where there's something more that that, that the player needs to anticipate out of me. Ah! <laughs> what was that, Mike? What was that? <laughs>